Apache Tomcat is a Java servlet container that has been around for a long time. It is open source and implements core Java Enterprise, now called Jakarta E, specifications, such as the Jakarta servlet, Jakarta server pages, and Jakarta WebSocket specs. The Apache Software Foundation released Tomcat for the first time in 1998, just four years after Java. Tomcat started out as the reference implementation for the original Java servlet API and Java server pages specification. It is still the most popular Java application server because it has a core engine that has been tested and proven to work well and has good extensibility. Is Tomcat a web or an application server? Several kinds of application servers are supported by the Java ecosystem. A servlet container is a way to implement the Jakarta servlet specification. It is mostly used to host servlets. A web server, like Apache, is a server that is made to serve files from a local, system.The Jakarta E specification is fully implemented in a Java Enterprise application server. Tomcat's main job is to hold servlets and JSPs. The Java, or Jakarta, servlet sets up endpoints for HTTP requests and sends them to business logic code to be handled. JSP, or Jakarta Server Pages, is a server-side view rendering technology that lets you define HTML interfaces that use data from inside the server and information from the request and response. As the developer, you write the servlet or JSP page, set rules for the requests and responses, and then let Tomcat handle the routing. The Coyote Web Server is also part of Tomcat. Coyote makes it possible to use Apache Web Server and Tomcat to serve static files. The Jakarta Persistence API is part of an extended version of Tomcat called TomE. This version has a wider range of Jakarta specifications and features. Is Tomcat a web? How to set up a program in Tomcat? You will put your applications in the web apps directory of Tomcat. There, you can put a WAR file, and Tomcat will run it. A WAR file is the standard way to package a web application resource. It is basically a Java archive .jar file with some extra files that tell the container how to run it. Next, we'll look at three more ways to use Tomcat to deploy static files and web apps. Exploded deploy a web application that hasn't been compressed into a WAR file is said to be exploded. This means that all of its parts are still laid out in directories and files. You can find some examples of how this is done in the WebApps examples directory of the Tomcat archive you just unpacked. With an exploded deploy, you can look at the files without having to worry about how they are compressed. By default, Tomcat also comes with a management application, which you can find at the manager path. This app lets you do a lot of things, like start, stop, and redeploy apps from a web console. Use Tomcat to do a reverse proxy. Tomcat can serve static files from disk, and it has the APR library to help it do so more efficiently. However, it's also common to combine Tomcat with the most popular web server, Apache, HTTPD, to serve static files. Tomcat and the Apache server can be used together in a few different ways. The first is a reverse proxy, in which Apache handles requests for static files and sends requests for other resources, like WebA, to Tomcat. The answer is then sent back to the client by the Apache server. This is just a proxy, but it is called a reverse proxy to set it apart from a proxy's usual role on the client side. Setting up the Apache config file makes it easy to set up a reverse proxy. Here is a simple configuration. AJP, Apache Serve Protocol, which makes it easier to deal with metadata-like headers, is another option. AJP is also a reverse proxy because its architecture is the same, Apache to Tomcat. This method gets rid of some manual work, but it needs more setup up front. Microsoft IaaS can be set up in a similar Tomcat way. Tomcat built in Jetty was the only server that could run as an embedded server for a long time. That no longer holds true, and Tomcat can now also run embedded. The idea behind an embedded server is that instead of the server containing the application files, as you've seen so far, you have an application with the main class, that is, a standalone Java application, that calls on the server's features from within its own code base. Overall, this is a simpler and more portable way to build software, and it is quickly becoming the norm. For example, Spring Boot uses an embedded Tomcat instance that runs in development mode. When you run an embedded server, you only have to deal with one part, the application, instead of the application and the server deployment. This can make operations easier. On the other hand, it is still very common to set up Tomcat so that it runs as a separate host.